Hi everybody, welcome to another YouTube video. Thanks for coming back. So today we're up in Cramlington and we are trying to get finished this solar PV and battery storage system. So you can see we've got the solar panels behind me. This video is going to be split into two parts. This first part is going to be the panels and the solar edge inverter. The second part is going to be the Tesla battery storage system and a whole home backup. Let's get into it. Okay, so let's go through, before we have a look at all this good stuff in more detail, what we've installed at this project. We've installed 24 375 watt sun power panels. That equals nine kilowatt peak of energy installed. However, there is a difference. We've got 12 on this side, which is south, and 12 on the north side. The customer was adamant they wanted panels on the north side. It's not absolutely north, but it's very close to, which means that the generation won't be anywhere near the generation is front set. We'll go into that in a bit more detail when we go around the back. So we've got the 24 375 watt panels. We've got an eight kilowatt solar edge inverter. It's all single phase and a 13.5 kilowatt hour Tesla Powerwall 2 with whole home backup. We've also got all of the solar skirt on the panels to stop those pigeons from nesting and also to make it look even nicer than what it does now. So let's take a look at all those parts in more detail. Okay, so we've made our way around to the back of the property. So this is the north facing aspect. Now, in the last little bit, I said they're not quite north facing. I've just redone the compass and it is exactly north facing. So it's gonna be really interesting to see how all of that works over the lifetime of the system, really. Customer came to us and said, I wanna fit as many panels as we can. So we did a design for the south roof and said, no, I want them on the north roof. So we went through the designs and it does add generation. Obviously, it doesn't double the generation of the south roof. The south roof is definitely the, the workhorse of the system, but uh, the north facing roof, certainly in the summertime, will do some generation as well. So we might do a revisit of this job as well, just to compare the readings and how everything is producing. You can see here, we've got exactly the same as the front. We've got 12 375 watt sun power panels, all black with the solar skirt, and it works really nicely on this very dark gray uh, flat tile and almost allows those panels to sink into the sink into the roof there is always those questions around ventilation with these systems you'll also see that the solar skirt doesn't form any sort of airtight seal to the roof you know there will be ventilation still there yes it's not as great as it was without the solar skirt but at the end of the day compromise have to be made if you want the aesthetics and the bird guarding which obviously on this job we did so yeah it'd be really interesting to see how that works over the next couple of years Okay, so let's go and take a look at all the different parts of this system and we'll have a little walk around the building. Come on. So a part that we're not gonna talk about too much is Ollie has put his beautiful earth pit into this pathway here and that's our earth rod for our Tesla battery backup. Like I said, that's going to be part two, so we'll go into that in a little bit more detail in part two of this video. So if you come round, carefully not to step on this concrete. <clears throat> We've then got this Tesla Powerwall gateway. So again, we're not going to focus too much on this. This is where all of the power comes from for our circuits. We've got all the power off to the building at the minute, so there's nothing live in there. From here, actually, we've got our solar circuit, our battery circuit, and our solar edge mod bus circuit, which we'll go into again in a little bit more detail as we work through the system. So let's carry on our way round. Here they are, here they are, the Chuckle Brothers. Right, so Dean's working hard up on this fireboard here. This is the home of our eight kilowatt solar edge inverter, as well as where all of our DC comes back to and our Tesla power wall cable, which is the one that Dean's looking at now. We're gonna have the power wall just below where Dean's ladders are. They've had quite a tricky cable route with this, with this project. It's had to come from the loft 
all the way down um, the hit towards the middle of the ceiling to and they had to try and root it back into this boxing and I know Dean's eyes will be burning into my skull because I did none of it <laughs> I, I came here today to take the glory uh, basically so we're just getting all the cables in the final positions get the solar on as soon as we can get some generation going commission that and then start on the tesla power wall because the power wall's going to be in our way a little bit to uh, get started so yeah that's what dean's on with so from that gateway position to here we've got a number of cables we've got a 10 mil three core swa and that is the power supply for our eight kilowatt solar edge inverter we've then got our doncaster cables uh, tesla connect cable which has loads of stuff in, which we'll go through in a minute, but is the only cable we need for the power wall. We've then got our Modbus cable. So that is gonna tell the eight kilowatt inverter when to ramp down production because there is an export limit on this property. Uh, so we need to make sure we're not pushing too much back to the grid. And then we've also got our DC string cable. So we've got two strings on this job, 12 pounds on the front and 12 pounds on the back. So yeah, we'll leave Dean to carry on painting his masterpiece, eh? Please do. <laughs> So even the boss can fill the kettle up. Lunchtime. So we have the system up and running now. We've got our eight kilowatt solar edge inverter. That's all up and running. We've got our blue light for internet and our green light, solid green light for production. We've got our two strings coming in. We've got our data cables and our communications cables from the solar edge mod bus that we've installed near the main meter box really in our uh, tesla gateway so if i run through what we've got so start on the dc side so we've got this conduit just here uh, that brings our two strings into our trunking through our dc isolators so we've got south roof and north roof so front and back we've then got our two surge protection units 600 volts each and then from there it comes out and into each one of these mc4 plugs then we've got our AC connector, so we've got our disconnector, so we've got our 63 amp uh, rotary AC isolator, which is 63 amp because we only keep 32 or 63 for most of our installations. So it, this could have been a slightly smaller, but if we keep that just to be a bit more streamlined. So we've got our main 10 mil cable, which comes from our power wall gateway, comes down in through this AC isolator, through our generation meter, which we need for MCS. I'd love to see those disappear, but that's where we're at. From there, back around and into this, through this 10 mil HO7 flex and into our inverter. So that route there is the route that the power takes once it's been generated round into the gateway. And then from the gateway, it can be distributed to the battery, to the house, wherever. Um, okay, so that's the two halves of the system. I like to imagine that inverter is directly in half. We've got the DC side and the AC side. DC comes in, converted to AC, it's pushed out back into the system. Just to touch on these, so these have a standard 12 year warranty and you can upgrade these to 25 years if you like. There's a payment for that um, to Solar Edge. They offer a really good warranty. The optimizers on the roof on the back of each one of those panels to optimize the power, they just come 25 years as standard anyway. So we've got 25 years on there and we've literally had our first optimizer go uh, in years. Um, and Solar Edge will be pay for the scaffold uh, within reason <laughs> pay for the scaffold and cover our time to come back and change that optimizer so you can't really say fairer than that a lot of the criticism of solar edge is that you've got all this equipment on your roof and you're adding extra equipment for the solar edge optimizers but if they're willing to cover and stand your labor your scaffolding and and everything and the actual part to change that on the warranty then what more can you do that's uh, that seems pretty fair to me so yeah that's all up and running now we'll have a look at the app in a minute uh, but uh, yeah there's plenty of power being generated on this system at the minute right now we're going to have a little look at the solar edge app this is what the customer can see about what how the solar's doing so we've got the test fall on this job as well but that's obviously in another video we've got this solar edge one and this is to reference how the pals are doing how the home is doing because we've got a modbus on this as well because we have to export limit this site to eight kilowatts so that all, that's all decided through the DNA. But anyway, so the storage app, we can see here, we've got the house in the middle, which is good. The panels are dropping 2.7, 2.76 kilowatts down to the house. It is nearly five o'clock, which is good. So it's uh, still generating nicely. The home is using 2.77 kilowatts, which will include the battery charging. So if the battery's charging, that will uh, alter the load of the house because the Solar Edge Modbus sees the battery as load in the house. So that's why that's matching 
main thing is we've got nothing going back to the grid and we're not importing from the grid which is fantastic to see so if we scroll down here we can see we've got this month this year lifetimes that is just what the soil has produced so we're producing a little bit today but we have only just commissioned this system so it's not as much as you may normally see in our videos we could change that to week, month, year, which obviously all me very similar readings. And then we've got an energy balance on this. So we can see the production of 3.23 kilowatts. 57% of that has gone back to the grid. So that's why all the system was generating, but the battery wasn't commissioned. And 43% of that has gone into the house, which will include the battery charging. We've then got consumption. So the house has consumed 1.39 kilowatts, kilowatt hours. 100% of that has been self-generated by the sun. Which again, these, all these figures are distorted because we have only just fitted this system today. We scroll down a little bit further. We've got a production graph here. So we can see what the solar production has been and what has been exported. Like I say, that'll have been whilst the solar has been generating, but the battery not commissioned. And the home's only using around 200 watts. So, so there's a lot of spare power there that was going back to the grid. But we're now using it, which is great. We scroll down, we've then got consumptions. This shows what our consumption was and what our self-consumption has been. So if there's consumption outside of what the solar and the battery can do, then that would be showing up as red and that would be what's been imported from the grid. We can see comparative energy. Again, this can be very, very no data pretty much because we will just commission this, but this will be where you can compare what you've generated this month, last month, this year, last year, this quarter, last quarter, and you can kind of go through that and see what's happening. We've then got some environmental things here. We've got CO2 emissions saved and trees planted. That's all good. So that's changing all the time, which is which is good news. But the main thing about solar edge and why people get it is this one here, which is our um, south and our north panel. So you can see there, these ones here, they've only just been turned on. So they've been turned on maybe uh, an hour or two hours, all generated nearly 100 watt hours of energy. These ones on the front, have generated well various 163 to 174 so that it's not actually that far off <laughs> the uh, similar amount compared to the complete uh, alternative orientation so i'm going to be really interested i keep having a little look at this one and i would like to do a follow-up video to this to show you how this is because a lot of people maybe have their best roof is their north roof the flatter that pitch though the more likely that light is going to come through and um, help those panels but Let's uh, save that discussion for a, another video. So we'll go back. See, so we generated three kilowatts now. Um, and yeah, that's the storage app really. It gives us loads of information. Uh, puts all of it in one nice place. So this customer is going to be using this app and the Tesla app to see how the system's working. Put all them are on his phone. And uh, yeah, a nice easy login. And we can also drop in on them as well if we think there's a problem. For example, on the panels here, like you can see, if we had a panel on the front, that was the same color as these ones that are in the on the back on the north face then we've got oh there's a problem there so let's investigate as to what's happening uh, and we can do some of that through the app and through the online dashboard because you can get all the information through the online dashboard as well so yeah that's the storage app i'm looking forward to seeing how this one does with these north facing panels so that's it part one is all done and dusted join us for part two very soon where we'll go into more detail on the tesla battery storage system how all that works the whole home backup side of things and that'll be out in a few weeks if this is an old video then it's already out check out our youtube channel and you'll be able to find it there thanks very much for watching please like subscribe share all that good stuff to help the channel grow that would be fantastic thanks very much and we'll see you on the next one